Welcome to the Overwhelmers Optional Podcast, where we cut through the fog of overwhelm so you can see all the ways to start creating a life that works for you. Hello, welcome to this week's episode. I hope that you have power. I've had no power for four days, but it came on in the middle of the night and I'm so, so excited. I'm in love with electricity at the moment. Um, yeah, which is quite funny. And a whole nother episode because actually the four days without power, I don't know, there's been some real deep changes and shifts going on with me and how I relate to um, my life and the pace of life. And this is not a let's all go without power and slow down. This is actually the opposite. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today, at least not directly. What I want to talk to you about today is basically, is your life working for you? And what I mean by that is, do you feel at home in your life? Do you feel like you're getting to do the things that you want to do, that you are behaving in a way towards the people that you care about, towards colleagues and clients? Do you feel like you're showing up for the people who matter in your life in a way that you wish to and at the same time are you showing up for yourself are you looking after yourself are you able to move through your day at a pace that works for you so that you feel well so I mean I could go into more we could go into huge digging about what it means to have a life that's working for you and I think it's an ongoing process and that's one of the things we do inside get your life back but I want to just give you that question now is your life working for you and then if you want to take it further you could say well in which areas is it working in which areas do you really feel like it's not working? you could go into quite detailed areas but I just want you to just go with, with your like first reaction is your life working for you today right now or not and then I want to turn things around because I believe that we're in a big shift and I've Somebody asked me yesterday, what is it you do? And I was talking about um, get your life back and about helping people get their life back and live with more happiness and ease, that I'm teaching the skills that we don't get taught, that that aren't being taught in school. And it suddenly occurred to me that I've shifted even more than I realised, which does actually bring me back to the power cut so the power cut happened and I'm you know I live in the countryside and I grew up in the countryside and there were power cuts were pretty regular not like all the time but you know you knew where the torch and the candle was when I was younger but this one went on and on and on and on and it could have caused me immense stress in fact I was astonished at my reaction to it I was astonished that I was able to watch my reaction to it. I didn't get angry. I find that really interesting because it is really stressful when things go wrong in your day, isn't it? It is really stressful having a power cut. There are so many things that we depend on electricity for. And also, I work from home and my business is predominantly online and we had no internet. And I don't live in a place where you can get good mobile signal. So I couldn't hotspot my laptop to keep working. And the doors to get your life back open um, went on the day this this episode comes out. And it's really important to me that matters. I've put a lot of work into that program and I love that program. And I know that somebody listening to this now needs to hear about it. And the only way you get to hear about it is if I get on Instagram, write emails, talk about it in this podcast, you know, go on Facebook or LinkedIn, unless I talk about it publicly, unless I get the word out, how will you know? And that's just wrong because get your life back works. And I'm really, really proud of it. And that's one of the things that came. So there's kind of two things that go on here. Somebody asked me what I did and I explained. And, and when I said, you know, about somebody who um, was in the beta testing. So I tested to get your life back with beta testers starting last March. 
and one of the first people to go through sent me this amazing um it's like a kind of vision board but it, but more detailed so it's like um her whole how she wants to live her life and she's doing that she's doing that for work because she's been asked to do it for work now how incredible is that to, to get to a stage where one you can tell somebody what your life looks like how you want your life to be for every section of your life every part you know how you want your health to be your relationships to be your work how you want to feel experiences you want to have to, to know that is such a gift but it takes digging deep it takes deep self-awareness which is what i teach and on top of that to have moved into work where she now has um an employer a boss who asks for that that that's incredible that to me is like if somebody that's what i longed for when i was employed that's the kind of um employer i would want to be because i believe that when we're all really living at our best when we're really really aware of what our superpowers are what our skills are what makes us happy and and, and being able to change allowed to change and grow throughout our lives with that when we're and it's not getting everywhere it's not like everybody just steps up a level and we'll stay there it's an ongoing process it's never perfect and it can be really messy it tends to be messy to begin with so it's this but if we were all aiming to live our best lives but in a way that worked for us rather than the thing that goes on at the moment which is you have to push really hard to have the life that you want you have to sacrifice you have to push other people out of the way you have to push through exhaustion you have to force your mind to think through the fog of overwhelm till your brain actually hurts i mean i remember days when i'd wake up and it was like the in the brain my brain inside was just like bruised from pushing to to think for trying to keep going through my week and my eyes would ache and i'd just get up and you know just be really positive and put a theme you know my tune for the day in the car singing going to work rehearsing how my day was going to be and all positive i was absolutely exhausted that's not to me living a full life that's really out of balance and that's what took me a long time to realize is that it's not necessary to do that yourself to have what you want in fact i would now argue it's necessary to stop doing that because otherwise what happens is when we push through ourselves so literally damaging our health damaging our relationships living in that real fear of running out of time um trying to do everything to have this full life so that the intention is brilliant i love I love you if you're like that, because I'm like that. I want a really full life. I don't want to miss out. My father died at 59. I think I mentioned this in the last episode. I don't want to be doing that whole putting stuff off till later. I just don't believe in that way of living. That's not who I am. And that's the kind of person I work with. That's the kind of person to get your life back. They're not necessarily people who want to do huge things like, you know, have an online business or start a podcast. Um it's not the actual goals it's the wanting to live as yourself to feel at home in your own life i mean is that too much to ask well it seems that it is because actually that's not what we're taught we're taught the exact opposite we're taught that you don't you sh- you you should push all the time push 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 and you know it doesn't matter if you're tired keep going keep going it's so pushy and tough and and then what happens is yes you can reach your goals like i'm really good at reaching goals i can push and reach goals i'm sure you can too because you wouldn't have got where you are without doing that so to have a career to have a business requires some sacrifice it requires some real focus on you know getting to a certain point but the the point is we're trying to get to a certain point and then we've got the work that we love we've got the business set up so we can do what we want to do and then we're supposed to be able to do all of the other things as well but because we i think because we we do it the wrong way we do it the way we are taught so we do it the best way we know how and the old way this old way which i believe is moving um is shifting for humanity so so to me this old way is where we push 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 against ourselves so so we're pushing against the body we're forcing the mind to think 
um, we, we, I would argue it's overusing the rational brain, the rational mind, sorry. So it's that logical goal setting. So if I do this, then I do this, then I do this, then I do this, then I'll get there. And yeah, you probably will. But when you get there, who are you by the time you get there? And if that's how you get there, because the how matters very much, then once you get there, you've got no idea how to stop the pushing. This is definitely what happened to me. And that's that is how we are taught to be successful from a very young age. You have to sacrifice, you have to work hard at school, you have to revise, you have to get your exams, you have to go and do more qualifications and more training and then more and more and more. And it, it's this endlessness of pushing, pushing, pushing. Now, it's not that I don't believe in studying hard, working hard, you know, temporarily sacrificing to do something, to really focus on something. Absolutely not. But it's the at the expense of what's it costing you and the problem is is that when we work really really hard to get somewhere and then we get to that point we get lost because we're stuck in the push and the i believe we train ourselves to ignore the signals from our body and to disconnect from our heart now that might sound a bit odd so bear with me so what i want to talk to you about is the old way of doing things and now the new way of doing things, which is what I teach. I teach the skills to gradually, in your own time, at your own pace, move from the old ways of doing things, which is stuck in your head, over using the problem solving brain. So you get stuck in that circular, trying to analyse, absorbing masses of information about something to solve the problem Um so that so that everything becomes a problem to be solved, which is where you may have heard me talk about it before, the get better at list. You know, if I was better at this, then I'd be able to. The reason that, that I'm not achieving this or I'm struggling with this is because I need to be better at this. I need more information. I need to read that book. I need to do this course. I need to get this qualification. And then when I've done that, so I'm better at something, um, then everything will be better. So it's this constant. And I do believe it's often to start with, it's an invisible list because we are not taught about self-awareness. We're just not. We're not taught this stuff, um, which is where the explosion of meditation and mindfulness is quite an interesting one. Because in the end, what we're talking about is a deep connection to yourself and self-awareness. So the connection to ourself is really important. Who am I? What do I want? What makes me happy? What do I love? And then you've got the self-awareness, which is what's going on with me? Well, how am I today? Now, that might sound really silly. You think, well, of course I know who I am. I'm, I'm knackered and overwhelmed, tidy. No, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's the ability to connect past the rational mind because the rational mind tends to go, yeah, you're, ti you're too tired. You're not organised enough. You should have got more done. You need to finish that, that project or that qualification. And then when you've got that or you've hired that person, or you've done this and then. And that's not helpful. That's not really how you are. That's just, it's not just, but that's that's a large cause of the overwhelm, which I believe blocks us from ourselves, from the actual real information. It's the kind of answer we give when somebody says, says how are you? That answer, and that's okay. I'm not saying we should start offloading, well, my heart longs to do this and my body really needs a massage. No, no, no. This is private. This is secret. I work in a very... I work with people who don't want to dump their stuff on other people, but are realising they're starting to and they're ashamed of that. Um, you know, that thing where you finally manage to catch up with a friend and then you've just left and you find yourself sending a message saying, oh, sorry, I was so moany because you've become the offloader by accident because you're just so damn stressed and you, you need support. But it's like, is that who you are? Because when it becomes a habit, that's when we know we've got lost. So occasionally it's necessary, isn't it, within a friendship to have that give and take that I'm going to hold space for you because you're going through a really hard time. And then when it becomes this chronic stress, we lose that lovely part of ourselves that is really capable of listening and laughing and, you know, being fun and being really present. So 
yeah so how is your, is your life working for you right now have you used probably because that's what we're taught how are we supposed to know any other way of doing it are you predominantly using your mind so are you spending a lot of your day in your head um, working out how best to get through your day and then at night there's like worrying in your head about stuff you haven't done properly or stuff you need to get ahead on or if only you could solve this and why can't you sleep and uh oh if you don't sleep then you won't be able to cope with the next day because you've noticed that you're becoming um a bit i don't know emotionally reactive and you just it's really important to you that you can maintain your professionalism at work and you're sick of being grumpy with your partner and grumpy with your dog. It's that emotional reactivity is a real warning sign that it's just life. Life's not working out for you the way you wanted it to be. So the new way, are you ready for it? The new way is to get out of your head because it's not much fun being stuck in problem solving mind over analyzing replaying conversations going backwards and forwards in time um doing everything you can to prevent a possible future minor disaster it's just not much fun and also it's i don't believe it's how we are supposed i don't really like yeah i don't think it's how we're supposed to live i think if you really want a full life where you are happy which is what we work. Everything we do in the end is in order to be happy, isn't it? We want to feel safe so we can be happy. We want to feel loved so we can be happy. We want good food so we can feel well and we can feel happy. We want meaningful work that pays really well so we can be happy. And so that money can pay for the nice things we we want and for enjoyable experiences and to give to causes we care about and, and to people we love. It's all in order to be happy. Everything we does is in Everything we do is in order to be happy. So I believe, and this is what I found to be true for myself, and this is what I teach and has it works. This is true for the people who work with me, is that when you learn how to listen to the body, connect to the heart and control your attention, then your life changes. So the old way is predominantly using the mind, ignoring the body and ignoring the heart and not controlling the attention. So that means that the mind, which is easily distracted and easily overwhelmed, is racing all over the place, scattered attention. It's really hard to focus. You can force it to focus, particularly if you want a full life and you are goal driven, but it costs you. It hurts, literally it hurts your head. And it also costs you in your ability to be present to the good stuff that's in your life already and to be present and hear when people are talking to you. And it it makes it harder to sleep and all sorts of things. So let's talk about this new way of doing things. We aren't taught to listen to the body. I think we're actually taught the opposite. We're taught, so like as toddlers, we're taught, aren't we? We're toilet trained and that is listening to the body. And then we're taught that, and this is, it's difficult, isn't it, in a school, because you can't have kids just like going out to the loo all the way through a lesson, because it's really disruptive. But at the same time, there is an issue, isn't there, where everybody's trained to sit still, only go to the toilet at certain times a day, only eat at certain times of day, not look out of the window, not daydream, focus, focus, work hard, and then go home and do more work. I mean, something really wrong it's that's humans don't thrive in that environment you know we need to move we we do need to gaze out the window and daydream so we're taught to ignore our body from quite an early age to to not nap if we're tired to wake up to an alarm to eat what's on our plate without complaining and finish it i I think that's probably changed since I was a child, but it's still there, isn't it? Food is food becomes a battle rather than a here's some healthy food, eat. And and I'm not suggesting I'm not getting involved in child rearing. I raise my kids. It's not easy. Um, but we lose something. We lose that that ability to really listen to the body and respond to the body and then I believe it gets worse once we go for this I want to live a full life so I need to achieve this because then you really are talking about ignoring the body throughout the day 
and then connecting to the heart, which sounds really woo, but actually is in our language. But we're warned against it. So I'm I'm reading a novel at the moment where it's really clear part of the message um, or part of it's not a message in the book, but part of the kind of dialogue. And one of the narratives is that it's dangerous to follow your heart dangerous to follow your heart and this is a normal narrative it's dangerous to follow your heart because you'll end up barefoot and pregnant you'll end up poor there's this poverty you know if you follow your heart you'll end up poor so it's this constant warning and well that could partly be true because it depends what you want right but the point is not to have it out of balance so the way i was taught it was um if there's a triangle the body, the listening to the body is the base because you need to be you know, roof over your head, food in your gut, clothes on your back, looking after yourself, solid foundation for life, then connecting to the heart. And then the top one's the mind. So it's the smaller part of the triangle. And that's really interesting, isn't it? Because we live in an inverted triangle where we are told to um, set goals with our mind, um, do everything with our mind. It's just how it is. We, we use words a lot. Um, feelings are seen as dangerous. We tend to solve problems of the body using the mind, problems of the heart using the mind. Well, that's not sensible. You ought to do this to the extent, like I've talked about it before, where we even can buy a bottle that tells us how much water to drink because we're so out of touch with our thirst. But when you start to turn that around and start daring to listen again and and it's easiest to listen to the body before connecting to the heart. It just seems to be because it is more scary. It takes courage to listen to the heart. And you can, the point about the way I teach is, is it's really gentle. So you just gradually do it and you listen and you, and you watch, you also observe how you're doing it. So there are no wild repercussions. There's no screwing up your life. Nobody needs to know. It's, it's a personal internal practice and you can do it. That's what the one minute mark does, which you can get hold of. Um, it, I te- everything I teach is designed to fit into the life of somebody who is too damn busy and too tired and too overwhelmed um, to do anything that requires a huge shift to fit it into your life. So, for example, inside um, Get Your Life Back, all of the practices um, are very short. And then the teaching, um, the recordings of the teaching for each week are between five and probably five to eight minutes. Some of them might be 10 to 15. And you receive that on a Sunday. So you start your week ready for that week. And then what you're doing is fitting in practices throughout your day. And then messy journaling, my um, unique way of journaling, which is explained in the course. And I did an episode on it as well to really up that self-awareness so that you can reflect on where you are and what's going on. But it fits into your life. And you'd be surprised because you kind of think, well, I haven't got time, Heidi, to do get your life back because how would it fit into my life? Well, it's designed to fit into your life. It's, it's, It's incredible in the way that it does do that. Why does it? Uh, Because it's brilliant. And I'm not saying I'm not blowing my own trumpet. I'm blowing the trumpet of my program because it's brilliant, because it took me um, it took me. Although I did the beta only a year ago, it came out of a online course and then a membership. And also I'm I've been teaching a long time. So, you know, I'm used to teaching teenagers. They're maths. I mean, that's like the two worst things, right? Maths and, and, and teaching teenagers. I loved it. I was really good at it. I loved teaching. I loved, I don't think I want to, I don't want to do it now. I loved teaching teenagers, but it means you have to change how you do it. You have to, you, you don't get, <laughs> you don't get them focused very long. So it works really, really well for teaching adults who don't have any time. And also I'm really impatient. I'm like, no, I haven't got time for that. Just, I just want it in a nutshell. I want it really clear and I want it to be damn effective or I'm not wasting my time on it. That's how I am. I'm really demanding. You know, I attend um, free workshops and sometimes they go on for three hours and I'm like, for goodness sake, it's too long. It's too much and it's too overwhelming. And now I feel really tired. Um, 
I'm the same with films. If you notice how films have got longer and longer. So like films used to be about an hour and a half and now they like two and a half, three hours. I'm like, you better, this better be good if you're taking that much of my life. <laughs> Are you the same? Like, why do they have to be so long? Just distill it. Or the worst thing is when you watch a series and they keep doing memory flashbacks as if you can't remember what happened 10 minutes ago. Like if you removed all the memory flashbacks, the the kind of not very subtle recapping as if you had walked out of the room or you were on your phone, which I guess they're assuming a lot of the audience is. But if you removed all of that and just went with the with the idea that people pay attention or you you use storytelling and filmmaking in a way that drew people in so they stayed hooked, it could be half the time. I'd be happy with that. Just saying, that's my rant. Anyway, where were we? Yes. So the old way is the normal way. You achieve success, you get to success, your life doesn't work for you, it's exhausting, it's incredibly frustrating and overwhelming, you're sick of it, you're surfing the verge of break, uh, breakdown, no, burnout, you know what I mean, that kind of like, Argh! I can't keep doing this, this is too much, I don't, I don't want to be this person, I don't know who I am anymore, I'm, I've lost the fun part of myself. I, I want my life back. It's that. It's that. That's the turning point when you can hear yourself going, I want my life back. This is not the life I intended to create. I didn't work this damn hard for this. This is too hard. When do I get to enjoy my life? When do I get to sit back and go, Ta da, I made it. So if you're at that point, that's doing things the old way, the traditional way, the way you are taught, don't beat yourself up about it. We all do it. And then the new way is not just my way, because I believe that there is a whole movement. There's a whole shift in humanity going on where we start to um, listen to the body again and really respect the body deeply and connect to the heart. But not without the mind, not without the mind. This is really important because you, what you want is why would you drop any of those three things like if you if you think of it as okay so i can't work out how to make my life work for me that's like a very generalized way of putting our struggle with having time for ourselves and having energy for ourselves and all of the different bits so we use our mind to try and solve this problem of how of how to make our lives work for us without having to give up any of the things we've worked so hard for. Because it's easy to think, well, I'm just going to have to go part time, quit my business, downsize because it's too much. You know, I want my life back, so I'm going to have to make it smaller. No, don't don't do that. Well, do it if you want to do it, but but come and join me and get your life back first because then you'll know whether that's really what you want to do. Because it's very very difficult. The the mind kind of I know it happened to me and I ended up quitting and that just creates so much chaos. And if I had had get your life back, that would enable have enabled me to, to do things in a way that was much better for me, much easier, much more supportive and nourishing for everybody around me. So basically, yeah, this is what I wanted <laughs> and it wasn't there. And now it is here for you. So the new way is where you still are able to, to use. In fact, you're able to use the mind more because when you really need to focus on something and it's a mind based activity, you can free it up from all the other. You can dump, get rid of the overwhelm and really focus. And then it takes much less time because you're not interrupted by your own mind. And you can also create in the end, we, we can get better at creating boundaries and space to get things done in the easiest way for us. You know what it's like if you get if you get time on your own, you can just fly through stuff. Right. You're not interrupted. But that's not how most of us have set our lives up. And it can be quite difficult to do that. That's another story. But this balancing between listening to the body and trusting that the body is complaining because it's guiding you. The, I think this is what's really important. We tend to think of any annoying symptom from the body as oh my god what's wrong with me now things keep going wrong i keep getting i keep feeling unwell i keep my i've got gut issues you know i've got aches and pains i'm exhausted i keep bumping into things i've got another injury that's stopping me running all of these things we tend the mind goes uh oh this is terrible we need to sort this out you need an appointment you need to do this you should be better at this you ought to do this whereas actually if we reverse that and say your body's trying to tell you something here and it's not telling you necessarily. It might, you know, 
later is not necessarily saying quit your job or, or, or quit your business. What it's actually saying is very simply whatever it's pointing to. So, for example, if your neck aches after being at your computer all day, what's your body telling you? That your neck aches. It's not ne even necessary te necessarily telling you that you've done something wrong. That's the mind. So that if you just get out of the head into the body and notice the, you know, the, the neck stiffness, that's just neck stiffness. That's your body telling you your neck is stiff, which you need to know because you don't want to damage yourself. The mind then weighs in with, well, that's because you did something wrong. You shouldn't have stayed at your desk all day. You get too tense. You need to handle your stress better. You need to change how you work. Da, 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 da. You need to do more exercise. Nag, nag, nag. That's not the body. That's the mind, which is why it's really, really cool when you can control your attention because you can notice all oh, the minds attaching this doom and gloom. But I'm just going to listen to my body. And then you might say, but Heidi, what do I do about it? Well, what if you don't have to do anything about it to start with? Because you've got enough on your plate. You don't need more stuff to do. And this is all the stuff we do in depth in Get Your Life Back. In depth, but in a way that fits into your life. And it's a years, year long program, but we get most of the work done in the first 12 weeks there's a 12 week boot camp where you get these skills where you get to know yourself really well where you get the power and the information you need to work this stuff out for yourself in in a really in a gentle way in a way that works for you so you're choosing the pace and how you do it it's it's, it's clever it's a really really clever course um, I'm really, really proud of how well it works. And also you you get support. So you get support from your team and you get support from me. And that support doesn't stop because at the end of the 12 weeks, you're going to have the skills you need. You're going to ha you have your own manual. Really short, like, a, you know, like a page, which is your summary, which you you will change as you go, but it's what you come back to. So nothing's lost. And you don't even have to worry about that because that's already embedded in the course. But you come out with the skills you need, with the information you need to get your life back. And then you start making the changes. Once you've got that information that your body and your heart have been trying to tell you. So if we see the signals from the body, not as terrible, not as needing to be got rid of, so you can just get more stuff done. No, what if we see it as really useful information that we don't know what to do with? What if we see the unhappiness as your heart trying to tell you something and it's all just useful information? It's all useful information that you need to guide you to creating a life that works for you, a life you feel at home in, so that you can be happy, so that you can have energy and feel well so that you get to do the things you really want to do. But obviously this takes time and you don't want to do it suddenly because you know the disruption that would cause, that that would add to your exhaustion and your overwhelm. That if you made a sudden decision, it's just going to create, this, the cost is too high. So this is about doing things secretly, doing things your way. It's about learning new skills, skills that you keep and develop for the rest of your life, but in a way that fits into your life and embeds into your life. It's all about you, all about you. And it's it's anonymous as in, yes, there's a small group going through together, but it's it's really tightly held space, really confidential. And yes, yeah, uh, honestly, I love it. And if, if this calls to you, then please, 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 don't miss the boat. The next um, group kicks off in March. The doors open 24th, which is the day this episode goes out. So it's the 23rd, the day this episode goes out. And you do not have to work this stuff out on your own. You do not have to do it without this program. Honestly, just please, please, please consider it because it works and it's amazing and 
I am astonished at the results of the lovely, lovely people inside your Get Your Life Back. I am astonished at how my life just keeps getting better. So coming back to the power cut, instead of having meltdowns, I was able to curiously watch my reaction. But in the middle of the launch of, of this round of Get Your Life Back, three storms <laughs> created havoc right through the centre of my launch. You know, there's so many things that I wanted to do that I haven't been able to do. There's so, But there is always more you can do. And I guess the gift of a power cut is I've had to say, well, I can't do it all. So let's pick really carefully. And being able to watch my lack of stress, my ability to be curious was such a testament to myself that this listening to your body, this connecting to your heart, this learning to control your attention, it works. And of course it works because I didn't invent it. You know, I learned it over the years from different teachers, mindfulness, meditation, positive psychology. And then, you know, my most recent training with Dizan, the, the Zen master that I trained with. And then I've pulled it together in my unique way. And if if my unique way speaks to you, lucky you, because you get the opportunity to join me um, on what is one hell of an adventure. And if this calls to you, then I'd be delighted to talk to you about whether it's suitable for you. Um, I'm going to be opening up my calendar um, later this week to invite people to just talk about it because either it's for you or it's not and that's okay but for now um, I'm going to invite you to go to www.heidimark with an e.co.uk forward slash the secret listener because tonight Wednesday the 23rd at 7 p.m I've got a free workshop where I'm going to go I'm going to take you through the process that I've just described so I'm going to get you experiencing what it's like to listen to your body, connect to your heart, um, control your attention. I'm going to take you through that old to new par paradigm so you can, well, so you start to build that skill. Um, and then you'll know, you'll know whether this is, you know, whether you and me are a fit to help you get your life back, you'll know. Um, so if you can make that free workshop, that would be really, really lovely. Otherwise, make sure that even if you can't come to the workshop, it's really, really worth registering um, because you will get um, all of the information come through to you about get your life back. And then you can decide, is it for you? And how do you know if it's for you? You can listen to your body, connect to your heart and ask yourself, is this program for me? Hope to see you at the workshop. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Overwhelm is Optional podcast. If it sounds like your kind of thing, then I invite you to go on over to heidimark.co.uk forward slash the one minute mark and get hold of my free audio so that you can get started on your journey out of overwhelm to creating a life that works for you instead of just working really damn hard trying to find a way to squish yourself in a life that isn't really working for you. So that's Heidi Mark, Heidi Mark with an E on the end, .co.uk forward slash the one minute mark. Thank you for listening. And anytime you feel like subscribing, sharing, liking, commenting, it's so, so helpful. It finds other people find this podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Music.